speed here. There we go, we are live. Awesome. I need to pull up the actual uh, image of these guys, and then there we go. All right. Hey Jedi, hey Tiamat, how's everybody doing? Give everybody some time to hop in here. Also, uh, Josh, you've been you've been out for here for like a hot minute, but uh, Tiamat, I believe, is Margaret seven one four. I think is what it was. Oh. She changed her uh, username. Ah, oh. so you may recognize. So many changes. So many changes. Hey, Andre. Top of the stream to you, Andre. We'll get that one out uh, out of the way real quickly. See what else is here. Where's Sharky at? What's Sharky up, Nomad? Man? Sharky will be. Sharky's usually just a little bit after he goes live. Let me. I need to. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna move my, my little my little face situation. There we go. So now I can look at that. Wait a minute, I want it to be a little bit closer. I want it to almost look I'm looking at. There we go. Cool. Today, of course, we are working on our hero, which some people struggled with, some people didn't. I didn't I didn't struggle at all with the putting this one together. Um, just one of those things. But I also don't have I don't know where I packed the painted version of this guy, so we're going off of the image that I have of the original one. So this guy for sure is gonna look a little bit different, but I'm not too concerned. It's been at least, if not more than a month since I uh, worked on this guy. Um, so that that's where we're at. But obviously, uh, you know, some big changes have happened around here or in my life in general and everybody's too. Good to see a world edit. Yeah, do you want to take a few minutes and kind of talk to us about your uh, oh your, your new place and oh how things are? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. <laughs> Try to just list the positives. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. So Sydney and I have moved into a brand new uh, duplex. So it's three bedroom. We both have two offices um, that are really great. Uh, it also, so, and in the master bedroom, obviously. So that allows us um, to keep one cat put away at all times because Arthur and her cat Tally are still learning about each other um, before we can just kind of like, we've let them see each other a few times over the last couple days, like from across a room while we're both holding them and they don't freak out like they did originally. Um, and then the dog is cool with everybody. The dog's actually a little bit afraid of uh, Arthur because Arthur's as big as he is pretty much. That's been kind of funny. Um, but we're up here, we've got everything Everything's squared away. Um, I'm still unpacking like commission stuff, a bunch of miniatures. I have the big wire shelf. Um, I did add the, the shelf to the Amazon shop because I know a lot of people asked about that when I did my test stream. So that's available for people that were, were asking about it. But um, I'm still unloading commissions and stuff into that. Um, really the only things that we've worked on, uh, oh, let me just grab them. Now this is the nice part about the way that it's set up. I can just move the chair over to the over to the wall and I can grab anything that I need to. So the only painting that I've done, eh, only painting I've done since I've gotten back here is, uh, let me see, let me see. Still unpacking, nice, good to see you as well. Hey Peter, good to see you. Hey Chewy, good to see you. Um, all right. So I did one lesson with Stuart, who will probably show up in the chat as well. Um, but so we painted this warlord. It's an overlord fire demon. I forget the name exactly, but he, he wanted to learn how to paint um, fire and everything. So this is the first thing I painted since I moved back. So it's the first, first painting I've done since, man, I don't even know. It's probably been three and a half weeks or four weeks. So I, I felt pretty, pretty good about this. This was a, a fun little paint job. And then of course, over the weekend, uh, I had our first catch up Patreon stream uh, where we painted Admiral Nof. So what's intriguing about the paint job that we did here, it was all about atmospheric lighting. 
And what you may not be picking up on, or you probably more so on the back, we went from a very dramatic top-down lighting approach. Um, so what you'll see here, when I tilt him, it becomes, actually we're gonna get really close so you can see the illusions that have happened. So what we wanted to portray was uh, this top-down light. So do you see how I have these harsh lines of the shadows that you didn't notice at all until now? What we were doing was building in a, a very, very sharp threshold of light. So that way, when you look at it from, you know, a standard viewing angle and distance, all of those harsh lines actually disappear and build into your paint scheme. So that way you're not blending as much as you typically would. And instead you can build in harsh light and shadow. So I know a lot of people didn't pick up on that at all when they looked at the final photo. You know, really most people are picking up on the smooth transitions there and like on the face and everything but all the techniques that we used on this guy were a lot different. So that was kind of fun. Um, and I've, I've loved this miniature forever since the first time I saw it. Then there's also um, another version of, him, of, of a hippo guy where he's like holding a big barrel over his head as well. Um, but so we had a lot of fun painting that. And then I wonder if I can turn off these notifications. Hold on, how do I? Windows, Windows, you are the coolest operating system just, just trust me here. How do I mute my notifications? Clear them all, please. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But either way, um, so we worked on this. This was a lot of fun. And then the other change that we did, oh, actually, so this was something that I haven't done before either. So I actually did non-metallic metal white. So I added white to highlight all of the actual metallic paint. I know that that typically, right, is a no-no a whenever you're working. Um, but if you're doing small objects like this, you can definitely apply white paint to do these super bright highlights because the monocle and the buttons are obviously metallic uh, paint, but we added white to actually create that super bright reflection that you can then see no matter what angle you're looking at it from or any lighting condition. So that was something a little bit different that we don't typically do. Um, and I just experimented with that and I think it worked really well. Um, but one decision that we did make is for the $20 or higher patrons, there are a few tiers above that as well, I used to ship out pallets every single month, and instead what we're doing is we're going to add four extra hours of video every single month. So at, if you pledge on Patreon at, at 20 bucks a month, um, you're, you are actually getting four two-hour classes. So that's eight hours there. Or, well, it usually averages two hours no matter what, but either way, we, we block out that time. So you're getting four of those a month, and you're also getting an additional four one-hour sessions every single week as we work on a long-term project uh, like box art level, super high level painting that everyone votes on. So essentially the same way that I take votes um, for everyone to vote on what we work on every six months, instead they're able to vote on what we do a long-term high level paint job on so they can follow along at home. So for $20 a month, you're getting at least 12 hours of, of video out of me. And I think that that's uh, probably extremely undervalued on my end. But we have 77 patrons now, which is really big. Um, and that allows me to, one, uh, not hate my life, having to you know, stay up all night painting uh, really low-end, low-paying commission work. And instead, I can focus on adding more and more teaching content and, and doing more stuff for everybody that's involved on Patreon. So definitely do check that out. That, out. that starts this month um, on Patreon. You can always check it out, patreon.com slash studio. And then the last thing I wanted to shout out now that I'm sure way more people are here than five minutes ago, um, right before I moved, I announced a painting contest that I want to do. Uh, and it's already started. It started right before the move, but the deadline is July. Uh, all you have to do is go onto Facebook and you can either scroll through my page. That may be a little bit messy at this point though. So all you have to do is just search Color Me Impressed. And that's what we're calling this uh, painting contest, the Color Me Impressed painting contest. This theme is color. So it doesn't necessarily matter about how clean you, you clean up a miniature. Um, or what kind of basing you do. I don't care about any of that. What we are evaluating in this painting contest is experimental. Um... No, the deadline is not June. It's it's in July if you look. Um, but so what we're what, essentially what we're wanting is people to. Oh, thank you, Reaper John, for sharing that. We're wanting people to actually go and experiment with color and do the craziest things that they can possible. We already have some prize support coming in. So today in the mail, this arrived from. Gregory, who is one of the uh, famous uh, award-winning MSP painting contest winners, 
as well as a instructor for ReaperCon, and you can see what he sent in as prize support. For those of you that did the jungle kit, you know that we had these awesome vellum plant kits. These are all laser cut vellum plants. They're really, really awesome. And he sent three of every single plant that he's ever made. Whoever wins that contest is getting all of these, plus whatever else comes along the way. I've been really busy with the move, obviously. You can see these butterflies right here are amazing. Look at that pinky. I got small little baby hands, so you know that's a tiny little butterfly. But all of these are also gonna be given away, and then anything else that anybody else wants to contribute. And then, of course, whoever wins that um, gets a full year of Patreon and a private lesson. It's like $400 worth of stuff. Um, plus all of this as well. So big thank you to Gregory. Remember to go check out to WickedElfMiniatures.com or check them out on Facebook, Wicked Elf Miniatures. They're actually very affordable either way, but this is worth a big old chunk of change for those that are wanting to kind of up their basing game. This is a great way to do it. So definitely check out the Color Me Impressed painting contest. I don't care what miniature you use. I don't care what paints you use. I don't care what scale you paint in. I don't care about anything. I want you to color me impressed with your use of color. That's the entire idea for that painting contest. Just have fun and experiment. And that's, you know, exactly what we're trying to do there. So definitely check that out uh, as well. Um, so big thank you to Gregory. I have, I have a little, oh, I just broke the uh, staff off the hand there. <laughs> I literally hit it with my hand. So I'll repair that before we get started. But that's pretty much it um, for all the housekeeping on my end. I didn't pin the arm this time around. There we go. But I have a nice little trick that we could do to fix it. Get some Insta set. Call this a uh, learning opportunity. Yeah, we just put some Insta set on it, just like this, and it'll dry immediately. And by immediately, you guys are getting a paint lesson and a mini fixing Ooh. lesson. All there you go. Bundle. Now he's repaired. So, but anyway, that's pretty much it. So we can get started now. Then, of course. We'll go over the paints that we're gonna to use today. Uh, we don't need some of these, but these are the paints from the entire kit for those of you that have it or do not have it. We're gonna be utilizing a lot of jade green today. The only green in the kit other than rotting wood, which you wouldn't necessarily think is a green, but it's a very, very dark green color. I, I used it actually um, on General Nof. That was the darkest color, or Admiral Nof, sorry. That's the darkest color on his pants. Then, in the kit, we also have two purples. We have this awesome royal purple, which is the coat that you see here. And then we have Sorceress Mist, which is the lighter purple color that you see here. Actually, what's funny is this miniature was painted with pretty much the, uh, the, the colors from this kit. So that gives you an idea of the diversity that you can get um, out of the forest kit. So we have those two as well. We have this awesome creamy ivory color. I've been using that a lot um, before the move. And then we have two browns. We got muddy brown and shield brown. One of them is very neutral and gray and yellow tinted. This one is very red and dark and brown. So this is your solid brown. This one's more of a, of a tan brown. Then uh, we have scorched metal. So you can see that here. This one's just a very cool, really dark uh, metallic color. We used that on the uh, axe for the bear. And uh, really today is just gonna be an exercise in ship shifting and reshaping some of the greens uh, that we're gonna be using. We will need, of course, our white and our noir black, but everything else uh, is directly out of this kit on this miniature. So we should be ready, yep, this looks fine, to rock and roll. So uh, my wet palette is ready. I hope you guys are ready at home. And, oh, you know what, hold on. I do have one, I have one announcement that I'll just say here because I feel like some of you, some of you animals out there don't follow me on Facebook, so you may have missed this announcement. But there is a company overseas in the UK called Jackson's Art, and uh, I just dropped all of my wet palette sheets. That was pretty cool. But um, they sell Da Vinci brushes at about eight dollars a piece, rather than paying thirteen, well, fourteen including tax or seventeen including tax off of Amazon. If you're buying them off of Dick Blick, they cost about four, twelve dollars each as well. So I bought all of these wonderful brand new Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 size ones, and I saved $120 including expedited DHL shipping. I ordered these on Thursday of last week, and guess what, they showed up today. So that is phenomenal. I saved $120. If you guys are gonna shop uh, for Da Vinci stuff and you don't mind waiting about five days and saving a ton of cash, definitely check out Jackson's Art. I linked their page on my Facebook for those that are interested. But I was like, you know what? I am tired of playing the game of, is this brush any good anymore? Yada, yada, yada. Which one is new? Which one is old? So, uh, yeah, Martin, I'm sure, actually, 
the DHL would probably cost about 20 to get down to Australia, if I had to guess. So it may actually still be a good deal, depending on what that final price is. But you can just throw them in a cart and check out that, that uh, shipping charge for yourself and just see what it costs. But is the Maestro 10 better than the 8 foot? Yeah, completely. Completely. Aha, see, there we go. We got somebody in the UK as well. Yeah, Jackson's is awesome. It's, it's much better than, than uh, any pricing that I found over here. So first thing, first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep it nice and simple. We're going to build up our um, darker greens. So I'm going to take our rotting wood, and we're going to use this. Yes, Jackson's with an apostrophe, Art Supply Co. Because that's the thing, right? Like, I would never have considered searching for a supplier overseas, if that makes sense. Like, it would always seem like it'd be more expensive, but not at all. They have a much better price and the international shipping is very affordable. So I got that and I also have our jade green out here. That's what this color is, right? Yeah. Okay. So this next step is actually gonna be relatively simple. So we're gonna take our one-to-one -one ratio of water to paint using our rotting wood. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it all in on the palette there. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, whoop, first thing we're gonna, going to do is coat his little weapon here completely in the rotting wood color. I do want some of that Xenothal to show through. If you did not Xenothal your miniatures, if you don't have the ability to do so, uh, don't worry about it too much. Just make sure you have a solid coat. We're gonna have to go back and highlight all this stuff up anyway. This just saves me a little bit of time, like 5% time, 10% time on the highlight process. So don't worry if you can't do it. It's not an end all be all technique. So then I'm gonna take this exact same color as well and we're gonna coat the cape. All I'm focusing on here is even surface tension. I don't really care all that much about making sure I have a solid coat. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting this color in to build up our shadows. This paint job specifically is a very good lesson in utilizing and managing a limited palette. Obviously, we've been doing that since day one, since we worked with a limited palette and all of our kits. But this one is all about being subtle and understanding what you're mixing your paints with and into to get the best result. I'm going to apply this as well to the other portion of his little loincloth here. Make sure I coat it from the back. And I'm gonna get a little bit more because I also wanna start the armor as well as the roots underneath. Okay. So we're gonna coat the roots, vine, whatever. Oh man, I, I have to compliment Justin. Uh, this weekend, all the TikToks he put out were so funny. If you guys don't know, Justin has a secret TikTok account where he dances to like current, um, like tween pop music songs. And it's just the funniest thing I've ever seen. So Justin, why don't you give everybody your TikTok? Oh boy, I was laughing, laughing pretty hard while you were telling that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save everyone the time. Don't look for my TikTok. It doesn't exist. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do all of the kneecaps and uh, that armor as well on the shins. We're going to do the little side piece here of the armor on his hips. Uh, we're going to do the nice little bustier he's wearing. He's got his little, little chest piece here. We're going to apply it there. Make sure you get the cloak on the shoulder. And then go ahead and make sure you're getting his weird little shoulder vine. And that will set all of the rest of our greens up for success before we start working further. Funnier than the Ronning Man? Uh, yeah, possibly. Even though that was a completely unexpected gem that the world received from Ron. So, hey, Nikki's here. 
You know what's crazy is Nikki and I actually went to the same high school in Texas, and uh, but there were, gosh, I don't, I don't remember how many people were at that school. Like our graduating class is like, there were like six thousand kids or something like that. Um, and what was funny is like I didn't know her at all, obviously, but because I only knew they divided you into houses, and my last name is a D, and hers probably was not because I would have known but they they everybody was sectioned by last name and so it was funny because uh, when I added her as a friend after knowing her from painting right I was like wait a minute we went to the same school how weird is that but the world is a small place all right so we're just waiting on this to dry before we move forward now what I will do is I'm gonna take our jade green and do a one-to-one -one mix with the color that we had previously and that's gonna get us started on everything else that we're working on I would, I would hope it does, at least. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, actually, I lied, I'm sorry, I know, I know. We need noir black on the palette, so you wanna make sure you do that. You can grab any black that you have, painter's choice. We always use noir black, because it's not super pitch black, so we can always go a little bit darker if we need to with our contrast. But I'm gonna add that into the mix here as well, and then I'll be adding in more of that jade green to make up for it. There we go. Really what I'm looking for is uh, more of a grayed out darker green because we want to have a super rich green for his armor, which is sort of the, the game that we're playing. We're shifting the level of intensity or saturation of the colors that we're working with. So we're going to go ahead and start layering it on to his cape slash cloak, whatever words we want to use here. So I'm going to apply it about halfway down before getting it off of the brush and then just using water to taper it into the shadows like so. Just like that. See how magical that is? It's magical, guys. The magic of being lazy. A book. Sorry, a TED Talk. Boom, just like that. And we're just gonna repeat that on all the sections of the cloak that are visible. Like so, being careful too that we're not getting it into the cracks that are still wet, obviously. But thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you guys are all having a good day. I hope you had a safe and relaxing weekend. I know uh, last night Sydney Sydney got um, uh, Vermintide 2. She's never played any of the Vermintide games, and it's on sale for like $7.50 right now. So I was like, hey, you should buy that. We'd have fun playing it. So we got to play that a little bit last night. We'll probably play it some more today. What have you been playing, Justin? More Tarkov since they did a wipe? Yeah, not as much as I originally did when I first, uh, when I first discovered it, but... Um... It's been a mix of Pathfinder, Kingmaker, and and Tarkov, and whatever happened to Animal Crossing. I mean, I'm still. Well, I'm sorry, my fiance took that over. <laughs> I have one Twitch. There you go. She is basically taking that over from me. I finally got mine like cracking to where I understand the game now, but it took me a while. <laughs> there you go. I I don't even know. She's actually on my account too to advance the main story. Right. And then like she gets on her. So she's playing two of them currently. Nice. But um, I've, I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch. Oh, okay. Oh, I saw it. What, wasn't that on sale or was it a new release or something? No, that's the... So the Xenoblade Chronicles 1, the original one for GameCube, they re-released for the Switch. Okay. And they redid it. So, which that just came out like last week or something. I, okay. I just picked up two because it's, it just looks better. And right. I thought it was the more modern game, so... Yeah, I remember it always thinking those looked really cool. And um, Xenoblade, and then there was something else for GameCube that was very similar. I just forget the name of it, but both of those games were very uh, intriguing. So you can see, right, we're just tapering the shadow in by adding water to allow those shadows to build. Now let me see, could you get the same effect by brushing water on the surface first? No, Chewy Boots, you don't wanna do that. 
Um, if you did water first, so think of it like watercolor. If you apply pigment to water, since it's a water-based paint, it's gonna go and spread everywhere immediately. So you wanna do pigment first, then water second, and it'll allow you to control it effectively. And for those of you that don't use a natural uh, bristle brush, you may have a little bit more difficult time because these brushes are intended for watercolor, um, and that's why I love them. It allows me to work super thin, super wet all the time and still have really good control. Um, if you have a synthetic brush uh, or something similar to a synthetic or even like Thor's hair or something crazy like that, um, it won't work exactly the same, but you should be able to get the same utility out of it as long as you are patient and kind of a little bit uh, more timid when doing the application and it should be okay. Coating it a second time to bring that highlight layer up. Now, right now this color looks pretty dark and it doesn't look as rich, but once we start applying the uh, lighter jade greens and the rest of the armor, it will become much more rich and saturated by comparison. Comparative contrast, of course, is an art principle, or a visual art principle at least, that uh, fine artists use all the time to do some trickery on the canvas. And it can definitely be applied to miniature painting relatively easily. So there you go, we've got our nice little transition there with the water. You can see it taper and feather all on its own as it starts to dry. Very nice, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the rest of them on the back here. Come on, how do I hold them? There we go. I know a lot of people were saying they struggled with either assembly of this miniature, basing of this miniature, or like like getting him attached to his base, whatever. I know some people pinned him, some people didn't. Um, honestly, there were a million ways to skin the cat, sorry Arthur, but I got lucky twice. The, the I suppose, lucky, you know, whatever. First time I assembled him, I didn't have an issue. This time I didn't have an issue either other than literally smacking uh, the weapon right as we got started and breaking it off. But painting it obviously is a, a safe route if you plan on using the miniature for gaming or anything like that. If you're just doing it for display, shouldn't be too big of a problem. Obviously all of my miniature Monday minis just kind of sit on a shelf. Honestly, I'll probably auction all of them off. <laughs> At some point, whenever we're done, I'll be like, here's a year's worth of these guys for one dollar, please. And then someone will say, but can you paint, repaint them a different color for me? That would be funny. Okay. So we're just sort of tapering it on this last bottom portion. I'm paying attention to where a shadow would rest right at that fold, and I'm not really giving that too much attention. That'll be it right there. And then we'll go up the shoulder. And I'll catch back up with the chat. I do see people. Let me see. Sea of Thieves and Animal Crossing are my go-to. Very cool. Yeah, I know Sea of Thieves. Thieves is fun. Speaking of which, I'm glad that got brought up because I saw a giant influx of new people, it looks like, on Twitch to go watch it. Did Sea of Thieves have a recent update or something? Did they change something? I know it had really bad reviews, right? Like It when... did for a while, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just like, there was a game that Sydney and I just bought that had like the worst reviews ever. And then they released like a 2.0 and then everyone's like, okay, great, thanks. So, and that's what's funny too, because anytime a game is on sale on Steam, I always make sure to go back and like, look at what's what's just happened with it. Because sometimes developers will finish doing a, an update or a re-release or whatever, then it goes on sale and the rating is still bad because of whatever happened previously. So I always look at the recent reviews. Um, because I didn't used to do that. I used to just be like, oh, bad reviews, who cares, right? But now I'm like, well, let's check and see what, why it had bad reviews. All right, so we're going to do the... Oh, I, I thought it was already on Steam. That shows how much I know about Steam. Yeah, didn't it come out on, uh, like, console? There was something that got released that was... Uh... Okay, there we go. I have no idea. Yeah, there was some pirate game that everybody was, like, really mad about. Oh, you're talking about Atlas? Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, that one is... I mean, such ambitious ideas <laughs> with kind of like Ark, where they had a whole lot and they just didn't fulfill any of it. I kind of like to look at them as the opposite of the... Um, of the, uh, the... That's that space game that's never, ever going to come no, out. No, man. Oh... Forbidden Skies? 
No, or... no, not that one. It's, was uh, it the one where people had to like buy their ships as like founders packs? Yeah, it's it's actually I think one of the highest grossing video games that's never come out in, in ever oh. because people have given it so much money. Star, Star Citizen. Citizen. That's the one. I like to think of the people who did Ark and Atlas as the opposite of the Star Citizen team. They kind of sort of get an idea together, release it, and then they start actually developing it. <laughs> the people get in and like, this, this isn't even a playable game. Very interesting. All right, so now that we've done that, we're also going to apply this color sort of at the root of the root or vine that he is resting on. Start building in color down there. I did see the bot link the Twitch subs. So thank you for all of you that are subscribers as well. Obviously this helps all the programming continue on from the Miniature Monday show, which thanks for everybody buying the Desert Kit. I know that the Desert Kit just got released. Um, but on top of that, uh, you know, you're supporting the D&D &D game that they're putting on. Um, obviously every other show as well, involving everybody that you know already from Anne to Sadie to uh, John show with brother Dave Reaper live everything right so big thank you to everybody that subscribes you can always subscribe for free using your Amazon Prime account that way you don't have to pay any money it's free money that you can give um, to everybody over here you can do that by clicking the subscribe button up in the top right hand corner if you're on desktop if you're on mobile it's somewhere on the app uh, and you just link your Amazon account and do that or you can just do it directly if you don't have an Amazon Prime account. No big deal. They have different tiers available, and all that does is give you, uh, you know, bragging rights, first of all, for supporting everything that happens at Reaper, but you also get some cool um, subscriber-only emotes. For people that uh, have them, go ahead and spam them in the chat. I want to see a bunch of subscriber-only emotes in the chat. Um, and then uh definitely check out the discord as well i know more and more stuff is going on over there um john is trying to navigate the uh like paint club on discord now and a few other things as well so definitely check that out there's also a channel directly for miniature monday so you guys can post work in progress shots there that's pretty much the only check section i hang out in is the miniature monday one um, but you can see that as well if you are interested the discord link usually gets dropped or there's always somebody watching that can drop the link there too um, and then especially as well uh, as like the ReaperCon online stuff gets, uh, you know, fleshed out and more information becomes available, all that information too hits Discord at the same time. And honestly, I feel like it's a little bit easier to get the news updates through Discord because you get alerted. Um, it's kind of hard to get alerted on Facebook uh, whenever, you know, they, they publish something into the group or whatever. So that, that is one benefit that I would say to the Discord as well as just being able to hang out with everybody that's there. Um, but I think that's pretty much all the Reaper socials. Remember, definitely double check your pledge manager for Bones 5. Um, I, I was looking at mine over the weekend saying, what do I need to add now that they've done all the power-ups and everything like that? So definitely check that out. You still have time to go in and add to your sub or your, your pledge, sorry. And uh, I think that's it. Is there anything like new or cool um, with, with the ReaperCon stuff? I know that you announced that... Um, Everything is going to be funneled through Zoom, unless that changes. Is there anything else kind of cool that I don't know of, Justin? Um, we actually had a, me a meeting, pretty in-depth meeting today where we may have concreted some stuff, but it's not quite ready for us to kind of tell people okay. how we're doing it. Cool. Um, it is coming along. That's about all I can say right now, unfortunately, but I promise as soon as I know for a fact that I've got a development path that I can follow, 110 percent um the the people in our lives currently on this stream will absolutely know what it is every step of the way sweet but that is always good news i had thought about actually doing some uh maybe the people in chat can tell me what they think about this um tell me what you think too josh i thought about maybe doing a stream to fill in maybe a spot later at night when i'm doing um like uh overlay creation for ReaperCon possibly through vmix things like that so that could you be cool see the making uh yeah see the making of the of the the overlay that people are going to see and maybe use that could be cool yeah kind of like uh kind of like sculpting but with just you know code sort of <laughs> i mean listen it's not nearly as interesting as actual sculpting 
Like it's probably close to watching paint dry. And I'm <laughs> pretty sure most of our audience does that anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair, that's good. Touche, touche. <laughs> so I'm using the same color on the weapon, obviously. I'm using it to pick out all of our highlights and start building in the reflection uh, for the work on the blade. I pretty much focused on this bottom portion here and I left it darker on the right hand side. That'll help us kind of build in our cool little highlight that I decided to do on the first paint job. Yeah, I'm excited to see the details for the uh, teaching to get finalized because that'll help me kind of figure out what it is I'm going to teach and how much of it type of thing. But I know they're working on that, obviously. Let's yes, see. in fact, uh, I would say uh, outside of stream, Josh, I might be able to talk to you about some of that stuff since uh, I, I assume you're going to want to teach. <laughs> it depends on what you have to tell me. <laughs> that, that's fair. That is fair. Um, but yeah, we can we can talk about that. Cool. Cooly-ooly. All right, so now we're at a stage where essentially some things are going to some things are going to stay where they're at, like the cape is going to stay where it's at, and then everything else now, it's a game of either highlight, highlighting it up using just the jade green, or highlighting it up using the white mixing it in, that's what we do on the vine, or on the weapon using the ivory. So it's all shifting this color a little bit uh, more than than what they would actually expect. So, um, but anyway. quick, uh, quick disclaimer. Uh, that was a leftover uh, thing from Friday. Nightheart is not sponsoring this particular show. Good. Oh, in the chat. Oh, in the chat. Okay, I see. I see. I see. All right. So now what I'm going to do is we're just going to take jade green, have it on the palette out already. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it so that way I can layer it correctly. There we go. That nice one to one. And then we're just going to start applying it onto the armor sections. So. Easiest place to get started would be this little panel right here on his left hip, but on our right. Oh, looks like I missed that middle part. We'll do that real quick. But I'm just going to go ahead and give it complete coverage. We're pretty much doing full lighting here. No real harsh shadows or anything like that. So I just want to make sure that I can get nice coverage on it. Just like that. In the interim, I'm going to clean the brush off, make sure I get this little, his little loin armor. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. That's noir black, but I'm going to make this dark really quick. No one has Hashtag to Hashtag loin armor is now trending. Loin armor. We keep your parts safe. That's what that's what their slogan is. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, so. Going back here, I'm going to do another coat. Just to make sure it's nice and bright. Remember, we're using the jade green directly here. Nice and saturated green compared to the rest of the greens we've used so far. It's actually kind of a hyper-saturated green. You can see right there on the camera, it's just pops really, really bright. Okay, now then, we'll go ahead and do this little section of the armor that I just painted that we had forgotten about earlier. Make sure you get the leaf. And then the little bit that's showing underneath it, we have the uh, like fur or whatever. I ended up painting it as fur. I could be painted as leaves too if you want. The trim, don't worry about the trim as well because that's gonna start with a darker color. So we'll be able to bring our contrast back in there. Then we also have another section here on the knee. So feel free to use the side of your brush there. If you're not as confident in over brushing, you could dry brush these parts as well. You would just need to do multiple applications to make sure that you get it nice and bright. But I'm How gonna you doing, back uh, Zambies? Zambies, you evening. Too, evening. Oh, what, uh, what's the time zone where, you, where you're at now, Josh? It's the same as Central. I know, I was kidding. Oh. I was hoping for more of a, of a, is that a real question? Are you stupid or are you dumb, Justin? <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> Being that, uh, you know, Oklahoma is basically Texas's half, so... Pretty much. Going back on the leaf here, highlighting it up a little bit. I'm not too concerned about the other sections of the kneecap armor. I just want that to show a little bit. That'll work just fine. 
the other kneecap, make sure you get the top portion there. Went ahead and got that. And then I'm only focusing on the edges since his knee is facing down essentially. Nothing else really be catching light. So I'm just looking for the edges here. Easy enough. Moving on to this little hip protector. I need to thin this a little bit. It's uh, not where it needs to be, I'm afraid. We're gonna pull that in. Again, big thank you to everybody that has been doing purchases during my move uh, through the Amazon shop. I've updated those shelves on there. Everybody I know has been asking about that. Um, I know there's a command in the chat that people can do to bring that up, but you can always go to amazon.com slash shop slash mini painting studio. And you can see some of the new stuff that I've added up on there. I actually just bought a new airbrush hood that is twice as large as the other one that I had and it has dual exhaust fans. So I'm gonna upload that one. It's only I think it's only $20 more than the one that I had on there previously. So the, the value for the increased price is awesome um, compared to what I was using previously. So I'm very, that actually arrived today. I haven't set it up yet. I'm super pumped about that. A big thank you there. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna turn back on the palette purchases and stuff on my website though. I haven't really decided if I wanna just completely kill that product to like a convention only thing or not, we'll see. That's pretty much when it would sell the most or randomly. I do have the digital versions available. Quite a few of you bought it while I was moving. So I do appreciate that too. That's a good way to support me. Beyond the obvious of getting the periodic table of color out of it. But so we're doing the chest here. Highlighting that up nice and bright. I do have another, I have two makeup Patreon streams this week as well. We're going to be working on the Mantis Man Warrior for everybody that was at the $20 and up tier. Um, I know that was one that we painted up and did freehand with. I know Jan, Jan Rogers, Gypsy Jan, uh, for those of you that know her, um, she actually owns the original paint shop that I did. She won that in a contest uh, and she got it in person when the Bones 5 Kickstarter party happened in Denton. So that was really cool. So we're going to re re repaint him in another session, and then we have a space henchman to do lighting, uh, or off off screen lighting or something. We're just going to do some cool sci-fi work on him. And then we have all of our other stuff that we're working on as well through Patreon. We have six months of content slated to go live. So I'm very excited to do that. We have another two classes, or another, I believe we have the first week in the month I don't do anything. Typically, that's my only weekend off uh, when it's not Patreon stuff. So we'll see if I decide to pry myself from the schedule to do something additional for you. But we'll see where that goes. All right. Now then, that armor is looking good. We're going to go ahead and use the same color to start picking out details on the blade. The blade, of course, is getting highlighted up beyond this point with ivory mixed in. So we're going to be doing one object with ivory and the other object with white. It's just two different tones as you end up working up your highlight. I'm pretty much using the side of my brush or the tip of my brush at a 45 degree angle here to do the highlight from the top. Big shout out too to Mike Disney and uh, Christine Van Patten over at Moonlight Minis. Um, Mike sent me this in the mail and he wants me to paint this up. Obviously Christine sculpts for Reaper. I know a lot of you guys have seen her work for Bones 5, but I got this little monk sent to me in the mail. Tea tiny little monks. We're gonna be painting her up at some point. That should be pretty fun. 
And then I think I'm going to do a co-stream with Mike as well at some point, so that'll be fun. I don't really do anything like that, so we'll see if I can make it special for him. But since I've met Mike in, in real life, I, uh, you know, I consider him a friend. That's pretty much my only, you know, that's my only rule with like social media stuff is unless I've met you in person, I don't really do anything. I mean, I, that may be a weird rule. I know some people are okay with that concept. Some people aren't, which is w weird to me, but I really only uh, work with people that I know or I've met. So Mike and I know each other, and so we'll be doing something fun. And then um, Shoshi from Shoshi's Minis, of course, you guys know I know her. Uh, she also sent me a, a commission in the mail. Wowie, wowie. So uh, I'm going to be painting up a extremely uh, creepy Kingdom Death miniature for one that is hard to find, so that should be pretty fun. And I get to do whatever I want. She wants, she said she wants me to do what I'm good at, which is crazy atmospheric coloring and mood and crazy lighting and all that good stuff. So it'll be really fun. Um, and then of course Gregory, I got his package in the mail for uh, the Color Me Impressed painting contest. Again, for those of you guys that weren't here, you can go on Facebook and join the painting contest. The deadline is in July, um, but it is a painting competition that has nothing to do with your skill level, which miniatures you use, your basing, anything like that. It is a painting contest solely focused on experimentation and use of color right now. Um, and prize support is coming. I'm giving away a year's worth of my Patreon for free and a private lesson. Gregory from Wicked Elf Miniatures has also donated three of every single product he has made to date. You can see that here. He sent me every single, three of every single one of his vellum uh, plant kits and butterflies and everything that he makes. So the winner is gonna get that as well. All you have to do is search Color Me Impressed on Facebook and you'll find the group where you can all become involved there. I'm very excited about it. I've seen some, some of the work that people are working on and they're definitely having fun with color. I think, you know, most most contests, especially when it comes to miniature painting, uh, either depending on the contest or looking for a particular style um, or a particular level of skill, right? And I decided, you know what, let's do something that has nothing to do with that at all, or manufacturer even. And uh, we're just gonna let people experiment and have fun. I, I feel like if you push people and you tell them that they'll be rewarded for doing something weird, right? That typically you'll get something good out of it and people will grow from it too. So if you are interested in joining that competition, all, all you have to do to enter is you enter a, uh, a photo with a timestamp of your primed and assembled miniature before you get painting and that's it. You're allowed to ask for feedback <clears throat> from judges. You're allowed to get feedback from people in the contest. Uh, essentially, there's, there's no rules about like not sharing or anything like that. You can, you can get all the help in the world you want as you experiment and you push the envelope with your painting. So definitely check that out. That's the Color Me Impressed painting competition. I'm very excited to see where that goes. I'm gonna pull some of this out on the blade as well. So I'm, I'm focusing on the highlight on the tip of the blade on the bottom, and then the highlight is on the left-hand portion on the top. On this side of the blade, I'm not really too concerned with those highlights. So now what we're gonna be doing is highlighting up the blade using our um, ivory color, and then we'll do the root at the bottom using white instead. So one will be a little bit crisper than the other. So we'll go ahead and get out that creamy ivory onto the palette right here. I don't need a lot as we're slowly gonna be gradually building it up. So I'm gonna take that and just drag it over here on the palette to a new area as I do pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio highlight. I'm gonna add some water so I get that one-to-one -one ratio of water to paint and we're ready to rock and roll. So now I'll be focusing on bringing out more of the detail as I slam the Reaper hat into the camera. Good, like good old times. So I'm gonna be pulling my highlight using the tip of my brush at a 45 degree angle to the tip of the blade there. And then just running it down the edge of the blade like so to keep that highlight going. Then I'm also going to be applying it on the little swirls here. And then only some of the vines. I'm only gonna be highlighting it closer to the blade 
reason for that is I want the actual vine to appear like it's hardening or, you know, like maybe this is a, a living staff of vines, but obviously the blade, the business end is uh, sharper or, or more closer to a like, you know, bone-like material, something like that. Since I can't ask this little wizard how he's doing his magic, we will just have to assume. And I'll go ahead and highlight the bottom point here, and then the bottom edge as well. Using the side of my brush there to make sure it's a nice crisp, nice crisp line. And then I'm gonna take the same color to highlight up the bottom tip of the blade, similarly to what we did above, just like that. Boom, you can see it's already starting to look really cool. I'm gonna add another brush tip full of that ivory. This will be our, our third highlight layer here. And I'm only going to go halfway as far on the staff portion or the handle portion of the blade. So I'm gonna stop about right there with my highlighting with this color and then continue it up onto the blade. Continuing to highlight the tops and bottom portions of all these little swirls to make sure that that highlight makes sense visually. And if it doesn't make sense, then I just have failed. But I think that that pretty much makes sense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight up the other portion. Essentially what we're doing here is like vegetarian non-metallic metal, right? Like it's a same concept as you would with non-metallic metal. We're just making it look like it's a plant instead. Vegan non-metallic metal, I'm, I'm assuming. Going down our edge again. The bottom tip of the blade. There we are. Starting to look really cool. I'm gonna add one more brush tip into our color. And this is about as bright as we're gonna go. First thing I'm gonna do is focus it in on the little swirls. I didn't mean to get it up in there, but uh, I guess I'll fix it. I haven't been painting regularly, so I'm a little bit rusty. <laughs> I'm, I'm noticing areas where I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm losing my skill here. Even though that's not true, painting is just like riding a bike. It sucks if you haven't done it in a while, but you don't forget it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight up this portion of the blade on the top. down like that. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and do the front portion on the bottom half right here. I have a little bit of a dingleberry on the tip of my blade. Gotta fix that. Whoa, Robert Nichols. $35 on Patreon. All right, you know what that means, guys. The shirt's coming off. No, I'm kidding. We're not doing that here. <laughs> but highly appreciated. And of course, <laughs> And of course, at the different stream, exactly, Zambies. Um, and of course, at the $20 plus level, you are getting 12 hours of video content and classes every shingle month. 
and I guess we're up to 78 patrons. A big thank you to everybody. A big thank you to the oldest patrons that I have. Not because they're old, but whatever, Peter. Speaking of my oldest patrons, McEnany in the, in, in the chat. All right, so I'm happy with the blade. I think we're doing okay on the blade. Uh, I think we do need to highlight it up a little bit just to make it visually popola. So we'll go ahead and do that slightly here. I'm just gonna use the side of my brush on some of the vines. Rest in peace to vine. I do like all those vine compilations on YouTube that are like, this vine compilation cured my depression because they are pretty funny. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more. Everything else on this miniature is so simple. It's just a matter of us doing the greens correctly. The skin's a little bit tricky just because he's very spare skin, but it shouldn't take us too long. Ha, maybe. Uh, wait, actually, I'm not sure, Peter. That's a good question. My dad's in the group, so. He's got to be there. Cool, so we're an hour in. I'm feeling good about this. <coughs> okay, now then, we just need white. Whatever white works for you. Painter's choice. And this is how we're gonna be highlighting up everything from the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take the jade green that we had initially. surgery that I had has been causing me a lot of pain. The surgery I had last December is causing me a lot of pain right now. I need to go to a doctor to make sure everything's okay, but it is very annoying. And it's gonna be real scary if they tell me uh, I have to have another surgery, that's for sure. So right now we're just using the jade green. Let's see, I need some more water here. There we go. Now this surface is gonna look a little bit shinier a little bit more organic, obviously, because we're gonna be using white rather than cream or just the plain jade color as we highlight it up further. All right, so now, thank you. Yeah, I'm really hoping it's okay too, especially since that doctor turned out to be such a nightmare or the one that I got the surgery done from. All right. Now then, using this color, what we're gonna be doing is focusing on just applying the highlight from the top of every surface that will help with the reflective nature of the lighting or the, the material, I guess I should say. I do have some glue in there making that area where his foot is resting a bit rough, but it should be okay. What episode of Miniature Monday is this? Like, uh, 15? This is 20. 20, oh my God, I'm a whole, I'm a whole kit behind in my head. <laughs> How many of you guys are excited for the desert kit? I know I am. Those miniatures are actually very satisfying to paint. Even the camel. Camel's actually challenging. I think that's gonna surprise a lot of people.
And then as for the next quarter or whatever, I just need to get my list verified and then I'll just send that off to the powers that be. But I do know for a fact that there was a, um, let me see. Yeah, I don't, I don't release the graphic. I mean, the, gra the graphic that I release, I may be one, is very large. So like if you look at my Facebook um, or where I posted in the Facebook group, you can see uh, a much better Im sized image of that. But I always release a, a, a much, much easier one. Can we make guesses about ones coming down the road? Well, I can tell you there is there 100% was a ReaperCon themed one, so that exists. And then there was a Mechanical Dungeon, and then there was a Undead, I think. I believe Undead was one, possibly. I could be wrong. Undead or, oh, oh maybe it's, sorry, it's, one's ReaperCon, one is Mechanical Dungeon, don't know what the third one was. Sorry, it's been it's been too long. But the ReaperCon one, obviously, very cool. The Mechanical Dungeon one, also very cool. The Mechanical Dungeon one, I'm sure you can guess, is going to be heavily focused on metallics and working with metallics. So that's pretty cool. Do the the vine here coming out of his shoulder. Or whatever, it's wrapped around his whole body somehow, I suppose. Who knows? Alright, so I'm gonna go back in with more white. And thinning it down, that way we can do the taper. Yeah, trash, it's definitely more of a display piece or a, oh, I hope this doesn't break piece, but. It's just so dynamic that I couldn't I couldn't let it go when I was looking for piecing out this kid. So we're just highlighting the pieces up further. Miniatures Den, my man. How are you, buddy? Big thanks. I was actually watching you earlier today when you're hopefully getting done with that terrible cape. Am I right on the uh, s the the Snorecast Eternal on the uh, Dracolith? I'm thinking. Hey, how you doing, Luca? I, I'm only saying that because you were complaining about it while you were working on it. <laughs> Welcome in, miniatures den, folks. We're uh, we're painting some fun stuff. <laughs> no, if I remember correctly, he was complaining about getting the... Yeah, I always complain about my models. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like the consistency or something that you were trying to get. But I know the feeling. So again, right now all we're doing is trying to layer in white instead of cream. So that way the, the shift on the plant looks a lot different than what we're used to. So we move our way up. All right. And then we're gonna add in a little bit more white one final time before we start moving on to all the other details. We'll go ahead and drop that in. If I actually get the consistency I'm looking for here. There we go. And then remember, we're only gonna focus on these smaller little highlight portions just because I want this material to look a lot different than any of the other greens that we have, which it does. It's a little bit similar to the blade at the top, but it's not, not too, too similar. I've seen another person paint this as like an ethereal vine or something, which is interesting. I think that's a cool choice as well, so. If anybody changes that, you know, how we always, we would always add in like glowing eyes randomly or whatever. If you want to make this kind of like it's a spell effect rather than, you know, an actual 
vine uh, step stool or, or what have you, then sure, by all means. And send it to me so I can see it. Send me your vines. Gosh, I bet the executives at Vine are like, who's, who's saying that? Please. Bring back the app. We need money. All right, so we are done. Finito, finished. Completado on that portion. Now we can begin something else. Thank you. Yeah, Justin is definitely hiding in the background. He typically is. Oh, I'm not hiding. Yeah, you're hiding. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our creamy ivory and we're going to base coat uh, strings and tings. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to do the strings and we're also going to do what you could paint as leaves, but I, I wanted it to be more of fur. So we're going to go ahead and start piecing out all of those. And then I believe we're also going to do his, uh, yeah, his bindings or his weird bandages because I guess he had a bad run in with poison ivy, assuming it was toilet paper. And he somehow messed up his entire body. So that's what we're doing with that. Oh, you know what? Actually, I need to check um, the Patreon because I'm not sure. I think, was it Robert that signed up? I think that puts us over a threshold, which is kind of a problem because I've already added. Oh my gosh, there you go, guys. So it's taken me three years, but I'm, I'm over a grand a month on Patreon. So I am like completely amazed by that. That's been a goal. Actually, uh, when I started Patreon, I wanted it to just cover my rent um, when I was living in Oklahoma City over a year ago. Um, and it, it got to that point at some point, so I was super excited, but uh, that's huge for me. That's amazing. So I know I was going to add something new. I do have a couple really high level um, patrons that may come or go, but I did make the change, right? Like I was saying, to add the extra four. It's a weekly one hour long term um, project for everybody at that uh, plus atelier tier at the $20 tier or higher. Um, so that's probably where I'm gonna keep it for now if I keep getting more people So like if we get to 1100, I'll probably add something because that would then That would then sandbag me towards anybody leaving at that super high-end tier um, But remember you can always check that out patreon.com slash mini painting studio uh, If you're if you're in it at five dollars a month, you're already getting two classes a month Which is really cool if you're at it at ten bucks a month You're getting four classes and if you're at 20 you're getting 12 hours worth of content. So big thank you to everybody on Patreon. Uh, without you, I literally would no longer be, well, I'd be stuck in the awful business of commission painting, which uh, we all know for my health, I need to be doing much, much less of that. So, but big thank you. That is a big milestone for me. I'll probably do, I don't know. I don't know. I'll do something. I'll do something special. That's, that's obviously a big deal for me. I don't like doing giveaways, but maybe I have to do a dreaded giveaway. And then of course, right, we are giving away a year's worth of the Patreon and private and a private lesson on top of that with the Color Me Impressed painting contest. Remember, you can check that out on Facebook. Just search Color Me Impressed. It doesn't matter your skill level, what scale you paint, what manufacturer you're using, what paints you use. There's no basing requirement, there's nothing. All we're doing for Color Me Impressed is evaluating people's use of color. Definitely check that out. The deadline is in a month. You could do whatever you'd like. I just want you to experiment and have fun with color. Um, also, of course, there is every three of every single product Wicked Elf Miniatures has ever put out before. So you can see all these he sent in the mail. This is at uh, Wicked Elf Miniatures. These are vellum plants for basing. We use them in the jungle kit. Uh, the jungle kit and i've used them in other stuff as well he even sent butterflies look at the butterflies these things are amazing so there's all kinds of cool stuff happening in that contest i'm gonna get a little bit more of this color out So I can coat the arms. Yeah, we're just gonna coat the entire arm completely. 
The difference with the bindings on the arms is that I didn't uh, highlight them back up pure to the ivory like we do the fur. Instead, I leave them a little bit darker. So we'll go ahead and get that taken care of here. And then we'll move on to the skin as well. What color? I need to pull that image back up is the, the problem. There we go. So the hair is very similar too. We'll go ahead and do that. Well, Peleus, oh wow, we have royalty in the chat. Royalty. The oil prince himself. Paintings oil baron. There are all kinds of jokes we can make here. Yeah, if you don't follow, well, really, Kathy as well, but if you don't follow the Wapples as a unit, you definitely should. And that's just not, that's literally not, so, okay, what's funny? Now, I don't, I think I mentioned this to him last ReaperCon, I'm not sure, but, so what's funny is, like, when I, when I, for a while, I have always checked out his website to see what he, he's been painting and all that good stuff. But what's funny is like when I first started doing commission stuff, maybe like five years ago or so, um, I remember my dad actually uh, found his website and sent it to me. He was like, hey, you should look at this guy's work because he, it's not like, you know, there's something definitely different about the style. It's, it's very painterly. It's not like your ultra realistic stuff. It's very, very awesome. <laughs> there is no weed, just a Kathy. That's funny. Um, but... I, you know, it, it's funny to be able to watch painters that inspire you for so long and then like finally get to meet them, um, talk with them, all those different things. That's That's been one of the most interesting things about doing the painting that I've been doing the last few years is getting to meet people that I look up to and that I get inspiration from that paint drastically different than I do. And, and you really get to pick up tips and, and not even really tips as much as you just, you're able to see that like there's you know, everyone paints so differently and that there are so many different methods, especially now that he's working with oils and everything like that, right? Like, it's just very, very cool to meet people like that and, and see where they go with the hobby and see what direction they move in. Um, you know, that, that's what inspires me. It's kind of like musicians that, that don't listen to music that's popular right now. And they, they only listen to just random stuff because it helps them stay stay unique and, and inspired and that's kind of what I like to do too I don't I don't necessarily look at painters that paint like myself at all I, I'm always more impressed with stuff that I look at and I go I have no idea how that's been done because after 20 years of painting that's kind of you know you look at a paint job and you're like I know exactly what, what was done there right and it's the people that make me scratch my head that I definitely get excited about whenever I see their work so that's that's enough of my that's enough of my fan fangirling for him, but I'm sure he's used to getting showered and compliments. But all right, so there we go. We coated the hair, the skin. We're just gonna do a little bit darker to begin with, anyway. Oh right, I'm supposed to do the the buttons, or not the buttons, but the. little strings there. We're gonna wash those down too. And then what else? We need the arrowhead, or sorry, the feathers on the arrows. Okay. So now then we do have a lot of browns. Thank you for the compliment. So now we have a lot of browns to work with. Well, really not a lot. If you include the core kit, we have three with intense brown, which I don't think I actually have out right now. Whoops. But wait, maybe I do. Maybe I do. I do. All right, so we have intense brown, we have earth brown, and we have shield. Sorry, muddy brown and shield brown. Three different tiers. Arrow feathers equals fetching. That seems like a weird thing to call it. Why would they call it fetching? That's so strange. Wait a minute, we're about to have an issue. <laughs> there we go. Wait a minute. I have the wrong music going. Fetching? Why does everyone keep putting fetching in the chat? I'm this, why would they name it fetching? That's so strange. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take intense brown, we're gonna mix it with the ivory, and that's gonna be the base color for our skin. Wow, 
Why is everyone now FL etching? FL etching? Well, now why are we talking about etching? You guys, I'm just so confused. I mean, some days. Some days you guys make sense to me, other days. Florida etching. Now that sounds like a terrible bath salt thing. All right, so I'm gonna use this color just to base the skin. Oh, you have to fetch the arrows after you shoot them. You guys, this makes so much more sense now. Okay. All right, for those of you that have played Seven Days to Die, you actually know that you do fetch the arrows after you shoot them, so that's pretty funny. Oh, can't you do it in Conan as well? Conan, uh, whatever. Yeah, I don't know why everybody is using the word fetching there. That's so strange. All right, so we're gonna base coat the skin. Make sure you get the ears there. How else would this elf hear, you know, how awesomely he's painted by the time he's done? Get the hands. A little, a little phalanges over the top. Oop. I'm knocking over bottles, man. Knocking over bottles, man. Hey, wild side with that subscription. Stop, stop trying to make fetch happen. Yeah, I know. I get it. I get it. I get it. All right. So that being said, all right, cool, great. What we're doing is we're going to uh, get the foot that I forgot as well. I mean, hey, that's kind of important, right? We got to do his little foot. See. Solid coat before we wash everything down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the actual entire backside of the, the shin card there. Shin card? Shin guard? Words, man. All right. And then this foot, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool, we're ready to wash things down. <laughs> Thanks, Wildside. <laughs> you know what's going on here. I appreciate that. Oh, I can't laugh like that, oh my god. Guys, I'm in pain. Hold on. <laughs> I have some naproxen. I need to take naproxen. Sorry. You know, what's funny is when the doctor did the surgery, he was like, oh man, you'll be fine after six weeks, dude. And then you look it up online and they're like, some people experience pain for the rest of their lives. Thanks, doc. But then again, if he had scared me away, he wouldn't have been able to try and scam me out of double billing my insurance. So shout out to that guy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Muddy brown, that's gonna be our wash color on the arms. And the little fur trim that we got going on. So we're gonna take muddy brown, we're gonna add two parts water, one part mud brown. Should be good enough for our purposes. And we're gonna wash that all over everything that we just did. Including the skin. I'm gonna add a little bit more water too. That was pretty, pretty saturated there. Oops, sorry. I'm very, very much so on the wrong side of the camera there right now. Go ahead and do the hair. So if you haven't noticed, right, everything that we're doing right now is kind of a play on the same way that we painted the greens. So we're using all of the same color, right? It's just depending on what we use to highlight it up and what colors we use in the mixing of the highlights that will determine the end result. And then once this, once this is drying, we're gonna just do muddy brown on uh, the clothing and other accessories that he's got. All right, we get it all. E, cool. I did get some of it here. 
<laughs> um, yeah, Sharky. So I had an emergency inguinal hernia repair with a mesh on my right hip area. So it's either the tendon that pulls itself or it's the actual mesh that hurts. But it was an emergency. So I had to get it done. It was no fun. But I've also been sneezing a lot because uh, I've had terrible allergies. And so anytime I cough or sneeze a lot, it starts to hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt really bad. So I'm, I'm assuming that's the issue I'm having and I'm hoping that is the actual issue. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Muddy Brown on its own. We're gonna use that to do the pants. Yeah, you're probably right about that, Peter. Sydney consistently gets mad when I pick up anything that's heavy. And then you watch her pick up something heavy, and I'm like, uh... I always feel funny, like, if we're, if we're loading stuff into the car, um, after, after going to Sam's or, like, groceries or something like that, because, like, People will see me standing there as she's like lifting a 50 pound bag of dog food. So it makes me look crazy, right? But I can't be like, attention everyone, I had surgery. I can't do that. <laughs> All right, so we've got that painted in. Go ahead and do this. And then all his little accessories, I'm actually going to do the intense brown, just because it's a much brighter shade. Get a big sign, I should do that. Oh my gosh, you guys, I haven't even told the story about the guy that almost assaulted my father and I and stopped our U-Haul uh, when we tried to pick up our brand new uh, fridge. He literally was beating on our windows yelling because he thought we cut him in line at the return line and he had a public freak out. Absolute insanity. There were probably 50 people outside. He's screaming, calling me fat, saying that my father failed to raise me. Oh, dude, I haven't even gotten to tell you guys that story. It was amazing. I almost called the police. My dad was like, I wish I had my gun on me. Like you guys have no idea what I have been through with this move. But anyway, we'll save that for next Miniature Monday. Just make sure make sure you remind me and I'll, I'll tell you about the toughest man in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Don't forget everyone, moral of the story, don't cut in front of people. Anymore. I didn't cut in front of anyone, okay? <laughs> I believe you probably did. Two separate lines, one for returns, one for online pickup. And baby, we had a scheduled online pickup. Hey, you was in both lines at once, sir? Oh yeah, because that's how that works. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, man. You know what? I agree. Carol Baskin's paid him to do it. Oh, I probably. Probably. Oh, wow. Reaper Collins. What is my life? You guys, you have no idea. How about, how about uh, last week, I had a AAA guy knock on the door and tell me, hey, I'm here to tow the Lexus. And I'm like, excuse you, sir? Well, so Varl B, you are correct. He was pissed off. So, oh, Twisted Doma. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, and so what's funny is uh, my lower back is where I slipped five vertebrae and I have like a chronic back injury from an accident. So that would explain why I can't like, it's a very touchy situation downstairs. <laughs> but um, a AAA guy is knocking at my door saying he's here to tow my car. And I'm like, what are you talking about, homie? And he's like, yeah, I'm here for the white Lexus. And so I walk outside and my neighbor that's like five houses down is like, like, hey, sorry, I put the wrong address and she had a Lexus. So he almost was gonna tow my car. And then guess what? Uh, about an hour later, I realized I don't have water in the house and I go outside, the cable company's here burying my internet lines and they cut a water, uh, the water line going into my house and guess what? It was underneath the driveway. So then they had to destroy the driveway by Jack Heron hammering it to find out where this water line is. So every day, okay, if you you guys act like, you're like, what is my life? Trust me, I ask myself that question nearly daily since I did this move because we have had so many problems happen. 
but hopefully they're all done now that I'm back to my very wonderful support system of definitely not trolls like Peter and everybody in the chat, so I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, I used all my good luck on assembling this mini. That's that's pretty much how it goes. Sydney is fine. She is, um... What's funny is she's been doing really well at not getting upset because the second she gets upset, I get, like, insanely mad at problems. So she's kind of been, like, playing it real cool with all the problems we've been having because she knows that if she got upset, it would just be the end of the world. All right, so now here we are. After all of those partially, hilariously terrible stories. And we're gonna begin highlighting up using our cream color, sorry, ivory color. All of these little, little fur dudes here. Oh yeah, Varl, I was out there like, I hope you have to repave the entire driveway. Please charge my landlord as much as you can for being such a dirtbag. But we'll, we'll save those stories about how I didn't have working uh, network networking in the walls. I didn't have an AC that was enabled outside on the house. There have been so many cool things about this, this place we moved into. Most of them were repaired by myself or my father. But it's been really cool, guys. 10 out of 10. Really, really great move. We've been doing good. If it wasn't for my really good friends like... like Reaper Collins in the chat. And Justin, where would I be? Where would I be? Even though, to be fair, um, both Justin and Collins have been having weird house problems as well. So I think it is just 2020 being 2020 at this point. Yeah, thankfully for me, though, it's more of a uh, people can't stay on the road problem. So, like, it's actually really more of a city problem. Oh, right. Like it, there's a slight five-degree turn that, for some reason, the people in this area, that when they see that turn, they lose all, like, reason and logic and responsibility behind the wheel of a car and go, well, I'm just going to go over this curb and I'm going to hit this transformer. It happens so often. It's pretty unreal. In fact, I've gone to look where it keeps happening because I was like, I've never been down that far. I was like, this turn has to be crazy. I'm not kidding. It, you're, there's probably a certain number of cars out there that when they, that they hit the grooves on the road, it might just make your car turn enough to make this turn naturally. It gets not much. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. There was a, there's a place called Pops out here in Oklahoma, and it's like a, it's on Route 66, and it's where, um, they just have like it's very strange all they sell is like soda and they have a billion kinds of soda it's very it's a weird place that's all they have but we went there and i'm watching the guy that's driving in front of us and he swerves like crazy like this cr i mean he just goes into the other lane i'm like dude are you drunk like what is happening and then i drive exactly where he was and there's a natural dip in the road that made my entire car move about four feet to the left and i was like oh my god Is Justin really yeah. quiet? Oh, there we go. Here, here. I'll make Justin loud. There you go. I do that. Now Justin's loud. Uh, hello. I'm gonna start whispering now. Do we get Justin it, ASMR? Uh, anytime, anytime anyone hits that transformer though, it knocks out all of the power in this entire subdivision. That sounds like you guys just need to put it in brick. Or something like yeah tell me about it like i no everyone was calling for them to bury it or like put it up or just shift it out of the apex of that's a joking way to, to call this turn like it has an apex because it doesn't it's more of a slight like i said it's more of a slight bend in the road but to, to move it more to the right or something so that it's just not possible for people to hit it right um, but the city just keeps basically redoing it every time it gets hit they just redo it it's like, come on, guys. Uh, no, Colin, it's not time. Well, they, um, what's crazy is <laughs> city employees are really awesome because we had to pay, 
to set up your utility account in in where I live now. It's not none of it's online, and you have to like email it or fax it, or you have to just, like print a form. It's so stupid. But they wanted a two hundred and twenty-five dollar deposit if you've never had an account with them before. Okay, just think about that. That is insanely expensive. It's not based on your credit. It's not based on anything. Just two hundred bucks and a twenty-five dollar charge to put on your first bill, right? We got our trash can yesterday. I've been here for two weeks and they didn't, they're just like, nah, whatever, you don't need a trash can. You didn't pay 200 bucks, like, what? Dude, city employees, man, I mean, I just don't, I think the problem is communication because they just don't communicate like the problems that they're having until the person calls angry, like, hey, where's X, Y, Z? Because once I complained, they got it out here, but I was like, why would I have to wait two weeks to get a trash can? It's so dumb. So what I did is I took our, what is it, shield brown? I took shield brown, highlighted it a little bit, and that's what I'm gonna use to highlight up all of his wrapping, because he's a present. This miniature's a gift, I don't know. But we're doing all of his little bandage armor here with this tan color, this light tan. All the strands are wide enough where you can pretty much do it yourself, every single individual one. Or you could dry brush it if you're brave. I would just say, go for it. We'll highlight them up a little bit further. All right. Now I'm going to take some white and mix it in there directly. That'll be kind of our final highlight color for all of that. Sharky, all right, we got a band Sharky. That joke just, no, 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 no. Oh, we we've had our Sharky joke fill for the day. All right, so we're doing our final highlight. You can't ban me. I cute. Quit. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that white color, mix it in a little bit with the tan. This is just, oh, sorry, you can't even see what I'm talking about. So now I'm just gonna have this sort of off-white color, and that's how we're gonna start highlighting up the hair. The hair is gonna go directly to white. I do have some glue in between the head there, so we'll just ignore that ugly patch. He has his quarantine hair, so we're not too, we're not gonna judge him. He didn't opt to just shave it all off, so he has to deal with ugly hair. Not too bad. Easy enough. And then now I'm just gonna take, ah, I need to get more white, actually. <laughs> All right, now I'm going directly with our white, highlighting up the hair. This time I am paying attention to the individual strands, etc. Where's my focal point right there? Here we go. Really, I just want that to stand out a lot more compared to the rest of the mini.
You can't ban me, I cute. <laughs> that's that's the response I would expect out of you though, Sharky. So maybe you should start go you should start playing that angle. Seems very on brand. You know ban, me cute. Alright, let's work on some scan, shall we? So what did I use? Alright. What I'm doing is I'm just taking a mix of that intense brown in with that ivory color to start working out the details in the face. Focusing in on the cheekbone first, up into the tear duct, down the nose, down from the tear duct to the cor tear duct to the corners of the mouth. Forehead, pretty much whole forehead as we block in the color. You can see how I'm starting to structure it. Tear duct over here, down the side of the mouth underneath the nose, top of the lip to you, the bottom lip there, boom. Let me get that ivory out again. Need more of that color. Do you guys see the bubble? This is a, oh, it just popped. That was hilarious. All right, so now we got some of the ivory color, mixing it into the color I was using previously. I'm gonna do the same application. We're just gonna be controlling where it goes. Let me see. Doing the side of the cheekbone back to the tear duct there, down the side of the mouth, the nose, forehead, I'm doing the raised portions, like so. Gonna do the lip, the chin, just like that as we build in our highlights. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit just so I can hit the correct angle I'm looking for here. With the tear duct down the side of the nose. Then I also want to make sure too, I am going to outline by the hairline like that. There you go, now we're looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the eyelid this from the side of the eyelid and then the side of the brow. So you should have that little dark patch right there. Look at how nice that skin looks though. Easy peasy. We're just following the form. Cool, so we got that. We'll go ahead and do the fangies real quick. That's pretty simple. Pretty simple. I kind of feel like this pose, he's like, ha 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 ha. You have to do that with your hand whenever you make the noise. He's like, Operation Dumbo Drop was the best movie ever filmed, and if you disagree with me, you're about to get the vines, bro. And everyone's like, dude, you're in a Chuck E. Cheese. Why are you having this argument? And he's like, Operation Dumbo Drop. He's just screaming about it. All right, we're doing one final application to highlight up the skin. I'm gonna do the tear duct right here on the outside on the cheek. I know it's not a tear duct, but you guys know what I'm saying whenever I say that. Then the actual tear duct on the eye. Gonna do the top of the lip there, tip of the nose, that eyebrow, this eyebrow, right up in the middle at the widow's peak. Then we'll do the other side, tear duct, left eye there. I guess the right eye, either way. There you go, we got a nice highlight on that fair skin. Highlight up the thumb, because he wouldn't be a wizard without his thumb. There you go. All right, so now that we've done that, I want to highlight up his uh, little 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 brown, uh, you know, whatever he's wearing on his clothing. I'm going to use Shield Brown directly. I'm going to throw that out there on the palette like a true champion. This would be simple enough to just do straight out of the bottle. Do it. There we go. Get a little bit of that highlight built in. There you go. Same thing right here. There you go. Now then, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to the shield brown. This is the color I'm gonna use to do the detailing on all of his leather accoutrement. Boop, just like that. 
highlighting it out, detailing it out. Same thing on here with the fetching, the thing that's holding the fetching. What would you call that? What's the word for the thing that holds the arrows? What do you call that? A quiver? Why do you got? Why do you guys always give me verbs? First it's fetch, now it's quiver. There's nothing shaking about this. I don't think you guys know the words. You don't know the words. Oh man, I walked into that one mouth open. Oh, the arrow sleeve. Thank you on the road. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, arrow sleeve. Arrow sleeves. That makes much more sense. I don't know why you guys always give me these dumb fake answers, all right? It's just, it's really upsetting. Really upsetting to me. Reminds me of that dad joke I saw on Facebook. Like a month ago um hold on i'll repeat it for you it was um it was a, a dad walks into a library i'm gonna paraphrase walks into a library right and he asked the he asked the librarian for uh, a book on turtles and the librarian goes um hardback <laughs> and the dad goes yeah with little heads <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and just kick. I'm gonna mute Justin here real quick. We're just gonna. Oh, I laughed so hard when I heard that the first time, or read that the first time. I'm honestly, far harder than I should have laughed. Mm. That's hilarious. Arrow holding thingy. I like that. That's pretty good too. All right, I'm gonna bust out the royal purple. And we're gonna do that on the the quiver. We'll put it on the quiver. And we'll go ahead and just call it what it is, I guess. All you people just taking my fun, okay? Just taking my fun. All right. I'm just gonna paint the quiver purple. Pretend that it should be purple. Why? Because I want it to be. It also looks nice with the green. Look at this guy, he came together lickety split. Now the skin's a little bit different than the first time I painted it. I wish I knew where I packed the original one so I could have it to compare right here, but you know what? He's lost. I don't know where it is. We'll figure that out at some point. But, all right, I'm going to go ahead and use that Noir Black, get a real dark wash. I need to wash down, like, whatever this stuff is here. Cool, look at that. We're just going to ignore that. We're going to wash down the purple. We'll ignore that. Anything in the shadows, real dark. Da -da 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 -da. Justin, have you been uh, watching what we do in the shadows? Uh, I have not watched it in, like, I think it's been two weeks since I watched the episode. Um, <laughs> that's just because I've been... Uh, like working into the night typically and then i just pass out i haven't done a whole lot of like that's why i said my video gaming right now is kind of all over the place ah. it's the, there's just no it, it, there's no rhyme or reason to any of it at this point yeah the last two episodes have been pretty funny so i think you'll i need to catch up i i, I will say that i watched two episodes last night of the space force on netflix so okay so i mentioned that uh, when I did a little test, I don't remember when I did that, but either, so it's not a bad show. It's not amazing. No, it's, it's not it's, amazing. It's yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. It's it's not bad, but I'll be honest. In watching two episodes, I was like, I want this to be funnier. Yes. That's so. That isn't just me. Yeah. Okay. It's cool. very uh, like. I, I, it's al it's almost like they wanted it to be more political than it was just Steve Carell funny humor. Which, I mean, that's that's fine if that's what they want to do. It's just, to me, it comes across more as like they're trying to convey a message and not do something humorous. Well, what's funny to me is I feel like it was, it's like way too tame. It's almost like they did yeah, like a, a, a four, yeah. it's it's like a four TV show, but it's not. It's a Netflix original, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very yeah, weird. It even says TVMA in the top left, like when you launch it. And it barely like, oh, is. Being, you know and i'm like you could just play this on like this is almost a sitcom yes like, very lowest common denominator humor i wouldn't be surprised if there's like a whole hour-long episode of like farting in space you know what i'm saying like that's kind of the dumbness that they're going for and i don't even like honestly from steve carell i don't expect that kind of humor exactly I expect like especially since i guess maybe my problem was when they said from the guys who brought you off the office right and they they primary cast steve carell that makes everyone go oh man and they set their expectations so high yep and then but if you remember the first season of the office is pretty awful Mhm. Mm so maybe maybe the next season will be much better well that being said 
Justin's Review Corner is now coming to a close, and so is today's episode of Miniature Monday. Remember, we do still have the Centaur, and I didn't have an assembly video for this guy. Thank you, Chef. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about fixing this miniature uh, because a lot of people are having the same issue with her uh, her Fat Joe Lean Back uh, 2002 smash hit single that she's doing. Um, so we'll, we'll get that sort of addressed for people because I know that in at least the Discord people were talking about it. Um, now this one's new out of packaging and the Lean Back's not that bad. Um, and the one that I painted, I did have to fix, of course. But let me go ahead and look. I mean, it's not too bad. You can see we're definitely dealing with a little bit of a sleeper. But, you know, the way that I did it is I just focused on heating up these elements here, like the top part of the thigh and straightening it. I didn't have too much of an issue. And then I got this relatively straight as well. But that's the prep video that we will have um, for this kit before moving on to the desert kit. And then, like I said, too, we'll be finalizing the next quarter's worth of kits. I know that there's the... Uh, mechanical dungeon kit and then there's also um, the, <laughs> the Fat Joe reference and then uh, there's the mechanical dungeon kit the Reapercon kit and then I forget what the third one was supposed to be it's either like underwater or like nighttime nightmare dreams what Justin sees in his sleep type thing um, so that'll be an interesting kit as well um, but so that will wrap it up uh, for our hero for this kit. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I like the facial features on this guy. I think it, it's really, really dynamic compared to the, sort of the softer features that you see for most heroic scale minis. And then of course the subtlety of mixing in the different hues of green with this limited palette. Um, but big thanks there. Remember, you can still pick up the desert kit and it will arrive to you before we ever get started. Um, so definitely hop on top of that. We're hoping to have them ready, you know, halfway through the month ahead of time. So that way they get released with a full week or more of shipping available for you. Remember to check out the Patreon as well. Remember, we are going to do some kind of celebration for hitting that milestone today. Big thank you to, uh, I think it was Robert was the name, but I'm sure I had that wrong. But our, our guy that signed up today at that $35 tier. Now this was... Uh, our our paint along over the weekend now what we do with the videos we start we do a full start to finish in two hours or less so this guy was painted in two hours or less um, and this available this video is available for everybody at five dollars and up remember you can check out everything that we've got going on from five dollars you get two classes two videos a month ten bucks gets you four and twenty and up gets you twelve hours so make sure to check that out at patreon.com slash mini painting studio uh, and then that pretty much is it for me. Um, if there's any other housekeeping, Justin, or if we're raiding somebody, let us know. I do know there's no more Wednesday shows, correct? Correct. Uh, well, there's the one in the morning with Ann. Oh, right, right. right. I'm yeah. saying, yeah, yeah, mine. Correct. There's no afternoon shows. And that's actually, at this point, that's predominantly due to the fact that we have, that's our primary Reaper Con plan today, so. Yes. But outside of that, yeah, no, that's that's about all I have to catch us tomorrow morning for Anne, um, and then Proctor's show at 4 p.m. Central. So, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for the new people that I saw in chat. Lots of new people, Tom. Uh, we did. We had lots. Thank you again for the raid, uh, Luca, if you're still watching. And uh, I think that's it, guys. Keep awesome. being awesome. Uh, you know, stay safe out there, and uh, we uh, we hope you spread the Reaper love. Until next time, we'll be working on the uh, Centaur, and then we'll be moving on to the Desert Kit. So, big thanks. All right. See you later, guys. Adios.